Here we have a solid sphere that's held fixed at the top so that it rotates around that axis. And somehow we get it to start moving. As you might expect, this thing is going to swing up. As it swings up, gravity slows it down, reaches a maximum angle, and then it comes back down. And that's kind of what they're asking us is when it comes to a stop at the top, how high up is it in terms of angles? This here is relating two different times, time one and time two. So that's a big hint. We should be using conservation laws, right? Because you can also imagine that as it moves up, where the gravity acts with respect to the axis changes all the time. So the math of that can be quite complicated, right? The acceleration is not going to be uniform throughout the motion. So we can ignore everything in between. That'd be awesome. So then to see if we're supposed to be using energy or momentum, we need to again look at all the forces that are happening throughout the process. So as it swings up, this thing is going to feel some mg force, but also because it's held fixed by the axis there, there's some reaction force as a result, rx, ry, let's say. But then these forces, they're acting at a point that's not moving, right? So there's no delta d, so there's no work done by these forces. And then also the mg force, that's a conservative force. As it all comes together, this is a thing where there's no non-conservative work being done. So if you look at the energy balance, this very ugly middle term goes away. Therefore, it is actually the easiest to use the conservation of energy. Now for the conservation of energy, potential energy is easy. That's always the same, mgh. The kinetic energy, we now have two forms, right? We have the translation of one half mv square, and we have one half i omega square. We'll go through this in more detail, but this is a case of what we call a fixed rotation. There's a point on the body which is held fixed, and everything rotates around that point. If that is the case, we can analyze the motion of this object as just rotation around that fixed axis. So then we can just use the rotational term, one half i omega square, as long as the i, we use the one around that fixed axis. Since this axis clearly is not through the center, we're going to have to make use of the parallel axis theorem to get the moment of inertia, where delta r is from the center to where my axis is, which happens to be just the r of the sphere in this case. So let's collect our data in a table like we always do with energy problems. We have time one, time two. We're dealing with rotational kinetic energy, so we need the omega at both times, and we need the height at both times for the potential energy. For your angular velocity, time two, you're at full stop. That's the easy one. Time one, around this axis, they tell us that the center of mass here is traveling with a certain speed. And around this axis, the center of mass travels in a circle like that with that r. So since v equals r omega, we can flip it around and say omega is equal to v over r. And then when we consider potential energy, we have to consider how high the object is. But the object now has an extent, right? It's not just a single point. So which point on it are we talking about? Well, as it turns out, instead of looking at how high each individual point on the object is and how much each of those change, the equivalent is that you just look at the very center of it and mgh will still work as long as looking at the height of the center of mass. So we'll define h equals zero to be the initial spot. And then later on, the height of the middle will be a little bit higher as it swings up. But how much up? This becomes a bit of a geometry problem. So let's blow that up a bit. So here's your fixed axis. If it hangs down after rotating by theta, we know that this distance over here is still r. And to this h equals zero point, the axis is also r up. So then we can slice this across 
and recognize that that is a right angle triangle. So then this length here is r cosine theta above h equals zero. So what we actually want is this distance here, which would be you take r and you minus r cosine theta, or you can factor out the r, and that is how we're going to find our theta. Putting that all into our energy balance. Typical of many of these energy problems, we have many terms that are zero. So as we define it, the initial potential energy is zero. There's no non-conservative work, and then it ends up not moving. So the only two terms left are these two. But before we can plug them all in, we need to find IA first using the parallel axis theorem. The center of mass one we can look up on the table, and this is another solid sphere case right here, solid sphere. This is a bit different view of what's shown on the last image, but it's the same thing, right? Instead of rotating around a line through the middle, we're rotating around a line on the edge, right? There's my delta r. So we still use 2 fifths m r squared plus the shift here is just r. So that's m r squared again. So altogether, that's 7 fifths m r squared. So we can sub that in there. And we have the equation with which we can solve for theta. This r and this r squared cancels, cleaning it up just a little bit. The algebra is a little bit harder to unpack. So let's just go through a few more steps. There's no need to try to get to the end right away. And so we have the number for cosine theta, which we can, I guess, sub in number and figure out right now. My v1 is given in centimeters per second. So let's convert that real quickly to meters per second, dividing by 100. Same thing for the r, 10 centimeters becomes 0.1 meters. That gets us that. And then we can do the arc cosine, the cosine minus 1 function. And since we're looking for an angle between 0 to 9 degrees, we don't have to worry about all that quadrant stuff, resulting in a angle of 10 degrees. So despite the funnier geometry and funnier algebra, the grand concept is that conservation of energy still applies to rotational motion, as long as we use the right form for our kinetic energy, which would include the rotational bit. And for our gravitational potential energy, we're tracking the height of the center of mass.